Hey Chicago, I'm Stephen Leonard and welcome to OutRock. I'm Stephen Leonard, and we're sitting right now with Mr. Ian Wilson at Transistor. Ian, welcome to Outrock. Thank you. Thanks very much. Well, thank you for joining us. So, describe your music, because I what I love about your music is you take these influences, who some of which have influenced me to write music, but but you take such a different approach to it, and I want to kind of you know tell the audience a little bit about you know your music specifically. Sure, sure. Um, I've become a big fan of the um, folktronic label for the genre that I work in. Um, I think it's uh, folk by itself, obviously, you have a, a connotation that there's something kind of acoustic-y about it, and obviously since um, I grew up listening to you know, Choir Girl Hotel by Tori Amos and Bjork Somogenic and um, all of these artists who kind of started out as singer-songwriters, but you know, huge electronica influences in their production, um, I wanted to bring that in and, and reflect that in, in how I describe my music too. years in my 20s in, in Boston, um, but I went to college in Ohio and spent a lot of my summers um, being a camp counselor at Northwestern and just sort of getting to know the city um, by way of being here during the summer and only during the summer too, which is like the way to right. sell Chicago yeah, is exactly. like just be here for the three months, <laughs> we're going to throw a whole bunch of like free street festivals and fry <laughs> dough and like uh, botanical gardens at you. Um, and and you never have to be cold again. Um, and so that that's kind of what wrote me in. And uh, and honestly, the winters here are better than they are in Boston. I'm gonna I'm gonna lay that out. It's a controversial stance, but that's where I stand. inspiration came from um, from two artists specifically one of whom is a, a queer musician Owen Pallett 
um, who used to, uh, his stage name used to be Final Fantasy, but now it's just Owen Pallet. Um, and I saw him, um, he's a violinist who does a lot of work with a loop pedal. Um, and so I kind of uh, realized that with, a, with classical training, um, it gives you the ability to sort of arrange songs in a way that allows you to use a loop pedal. Because a lot of it is sort of this um, funny game of putting the pieces together of, okay, if I'm going to have this chord on the loop pedal, like, what can I be playing on the piano that won't clash with that? Um, so that's, once I saw him kind of doing that and writing music in that way, that's um, where I got the idea to do that with a keyboard instead of a, a violin. Let's say you're sitting down and, you know, you have a thought for a song, you have an idea, right. and you start playing with it, the, the melodies and, and just the, the kind of mm -hmm. sound from it. How do you, where do you start? I usually start with, um, with an actual chord progression. I, I start with the music and the lyrics usually come later. Um, and then um, the looping actually comes after the piano part is sort of fleshed out. Um, I write a lot of the, the riffs that wind up on instruments from the synthesizer on piano. Um, and I write things that I think would translate well to other instruments, um, stuff that I can sort of rip off of the piano and, and move around. Um, which frees up my hands on the piano to do other things. So that's kind of, that's about as close as to a formula as I get in terms of my process. I like to think that I have a um, kind of a sneak attack approach to <laughs> the queer angle in my music. Uh, I like to think that I, I put a little bit of the queer experience into every song, um, but for uh, by and large, my songs aren't predominantly about you know gay themes or queer themes or, or anything like that. They um, they tend to be songs that I feel like anybody could relate to. Um, Obviously, you're gonna you're gonna get the most people listening to you that way. Um, funny story about um, Maid. Um, you know, Maid doesn't have any specifically like queer material in it for you and me. Like you and me listening to it probably would just be like that's just a relationship song. But the fact that I'm a guy and I'm singing about he, like there's that male pronoun in there. I was playing this at a college. Um, and this guy came up and he was like, man, I really like that song. I got confused because at, at first, you know, I was listening to the chorus and I was like, okay, this is about some girl. And then, <laughs> and then you got to he and it, so is this like, who's this about? Like the fact that I was gay did not even sure. register, like did not. And, and so, um, so I, I like to think of that as an example of like, even just using that pronoun is sure. enough exposure for some people to sort of change how they're thinking about rock music. Mm -hmm. which is currently on iTunes and other uh, music downloading sites. Tell us a little bit about the creator, mm -hmm. about your process with writing it, recording it, uh, and how, you know, where you kind of see yourself now compared, because it's been a couple of years now. Yeah, yeah, it's been a so, couple of years. And then I know that you're also working on another project as well. So right, yeah, right. So, um, creator was, was 2008, um, so it, uh, I recorded it um, completely at home. It was completely a home project, um, and it was really just my first attempt at recorded music. You know, I had been 
dabbling and writing songs. Um, it was right after I moved to Chicago and kind of made this decision like, okay, I'm gonna really give this a go for real in Chicago now. Um, so uh, it was really just sort of like, you know, I took five of my new songs that I was most proud of and I was just like, I need to get these out here and start playing shows. Um, so as opposed to the, the project I'm working on now, um, full length called This Is Water that's coming out in um, the first half of 2012, uh, that's that's been a much more um, it's a much more cohesive idea. Um, whereas Crater EP, the Crater EP is more of like um, you know the best of that period of Ian Wilson. Well, that was another episode of OutRock here on Gay Chicago TV. Tune in next time and don't forget to find us on Facebook.